better experience was being sued in New Zealand. What do you think are the most positive things about New Zealand? But that was one of the worst experience I had. What's our favorite pies? Yeah, yeah, that's very important. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to another video from Clan Amado. If you don't know us already, we are here to show you the authentic culture and lifestyle of New Zealand and give you a recap of the 10 months that we traveled around New Zealand. A lot of adventure, a lot of fun, a lot of uh, special experience. And, and if you're watching this video, we already made it back safe to Europe. We're sitting down now. But it's moments. This is the hardest yeah. video to make. So Always the honestly, hardest. it is. It's very challenging. So it's gonna be emotional. It's gonna be a tough one. So we're gonna answer your questions. We're gonna give an insight of our experience and we hope you stay tuned for this video. Let's do it. So if you're new to our channel, thanks so much for tuning in. And if you're interested in what to know, what to do, everything about New Zealand, you're at the right place. And if you're watching for a very long time because you were Kiwi, for example, you're very grateful yeah, that you, you followed our journey. We're so grateful for this community we built and you guys are awesome. All the Kiwis we met or talk to or hear on our community. You guys are awesome. We're just being ourselves, yeah. exposing what we see yeah. and what we do around the country. So that's our main objective. Nothing fancy, just showing you the reality of New Zealand. And that was, that's kind of what stood out the most for a lot of Kiwis watching us. So Glenn, the first question, how do we feel about after 10 months traveling to New Zealand? How do you feel? Devastating. It's, it was quite sad leaving the country on the plane. Of course, when you actually sit down and relax, you kind of think about it more and you do get flashbacks of all the special memories we uh, encountered while traveling the country. The people made the experience that much more special while traveling the country. And of course, the nature is beautiful, but it's the people that make the country very, very enjoyable to travel. We are very emotional that we have left New Zealand. 10 months is a very long time and an amazing time to see a country in depth and so many people have reached out to us and told us you have seen more than most Kiwis and which would be the reality because for some reason when you live in your country you don't travel your own country you'd like to travel abroad always so that is the reality unfortunately yeah. so we travel to New Zealand to see the whole country in case you're new to our channel we want to give you a small recap of what we did how our 10 months went where the story kind of where, where the story started and yeah, let's start. Where the mission so, started. We arrived in... Auckland. 2023. With no plan. With no plan. With so no we didn't plan. do any research. We just showed up in Auckland. We were very busy beforehand. We had jobs. So we were. We just booked a plane ticket to Auckland. We yeah. had one week in Auckland booked. And in that and we, we... just figured out everything on the spot. Yeah. Literally. So we just started doing the research. When we were jet lagged, Obviously not the best time to no. do it. So in that week, we bought a car. We got it through Facebook Marketplace. Marketplace, there. Toyota Wish, which we dearly loved. So our car was self-contained. Had a that bed, means kitchen. You have like everything set up to be able to do kind of freedom camping. Yeah. But they're now changing the rules to do self-contained. So you have to have a toilet that's actually stuck to the ground in 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 the vehicle, and also your your clean yeah. water, your dirty water tank. So it's gonna be a bit more challenging, challenging. in June 2025. But you have another year if you're watching this live. You can buy them on Facebook Marketplace. Any other yeah. sites? The oh, that's the main one. I think that's, that's the, the most effective one. one. Yeah, and then we set up a bank account with ASB. Yeah. There's also that was Bank of New Zealand. Good. That was pretty good. I actually, we never needed it. You needed it because yeah. we didn't end up doing any season work, but you had a bank account. We, we did the odd bit of work yours. here and there. So. We, and then we, also we got a two degree phone contract in Auckland. Yeah. So we got a nice discount on that for the four six months because two of us signed up at the same time. So that was our first week and then off we went with our two year the wish to Turanga and we organized to another Facebook Tauranga. room. Tauranga. Tauranga. Pronounce it correctly. Tauranga. Everybody tells us. Ten months later and I still can't pronounce it. Tauranga. Tauranga. Hopefully we said it right this time. But <laughs> 
So we organized in that week uh, through a Facebook group, which is called Woofing. Just quickly, Woofing is the concept of you trade your, trade time, your time for accommodation and food. Exactly. Yeah. On a farm. Or anywhere, a house. On Facebook, it's mainly a farm. And they also have the website, it's called Woofing. Yeah. And you can also find nice hosts there. We found a family in Toronga. So for two of us, it was, it was our first time actually doing Woofing. So for the farm and then us. So it made it more authentic and special. We did stay in a tiny house which was amazing and such a great experience because so the view was awesome as the well. The deal was staying there and going there for two weeks and it ended up being three, three months. months. And it, I say, I'd say it also because it was June, the start of winter, and we didn't know what we want to do. And honestly, I think the Bay of Plenty, where Turanga is located, is an amazing place. I highly recommend if you're coming in winter, especially from the European summer in yeah. June. It's a great place. The weather is decent. The weather is not that bad in, in the winter in the bay of plenty you so don't get snow or anything so we stayed until the end of august uh, did our 10 hours work per week yeah. and and enjoyed and traveled around the bay of plenty and the waikato region and then we also organized our second woofing experience to another facebook group facebook it always worked right? well through facebook most of the For time us it did. more efficient more effective i find yeah and then we went to a lovely family in hawks bay yeah. where we also stayed for two weeks in a lovely 1900 yeah. estate beautiful house beautiful experience beautiful. and they also had a nice au pair and you might see myra in other videos we made such a good friend that's where and, we met her actually uh, that's myra. where we met myra American. you've probably seen her in other videos she became such a good friend and that was so amazing and then afterwards i honestly hawks bay highly recommend to go to hawks bay it's always sunny i feel it's a sunshine state in the north island maybe you're the wine region <laughs> we got all the fine wines yeah. if you want to have a good time taste some wine yeah and that's the wine region yeah and then we organized another woofing experience so that must have been november it's hard to recap now but then we went to Taranaki because we heard so many good things about Taranaki and we wanted to do experience the mountain, the, the beautiful area, Ma Mount Egmont. Egmont it's yeah. called. No, Mount Taranaki now. It used to be called uh, Mount Egmont Did they back in the old it? days. Yeah, everybody calls it Mount Taranaki now. Okay, the Mount Taranaki. I've been uh, educated? Yeah, educated about that okay. on our previous videos. So that's why we went for another two weeks where we also did some farm, farm work, maybe just garden work. It was a lifestyle. A lot of weed. Lifestyle blog we did we did a lot of reading and then we organized another house sitting actually experience to youtube family reached out to us to youtube and asked us if we were interested in yep. uh, looking after their two dogs to cats and for chickens and we like yeah that sounds amazing and the family was located in wellington we wanted to go to wellington anyways because we made our way down to the bottom of the north island to head later on to the south island yep so that's where we stayed for another five weeks where four weeks in wellington it was four weeks in wellington four yeah. weeks in wellington i was sitting after so, the animals that's the good thing about housing yeah. get free accommodation and explore the area it yeah. minimizes your expenses that must have been november december yep and then we took the inter island ferry to the south island from then on we decided okay where are we gonna go are we gonna stay in the car what's the weather doing weather wasn't too great yet it was just the start of summer so we decided okay let's do one more woofing and we headed straight with a few stops in plenum uh, but we headed straight to christchurch and we stayed outside of christchurch for a week yep. and then also with a lovely family we met through youtube after christchurch we just stayed in a car and traveled so and then we decided okay now it's time to live in a car so we explored Lake Tekapo, Twizo, Omaru, Timaru yeah they were pretty cool places yeah because I think we were or we organized for December our second house sitting experience in the Needham, Needham Scottish town yeah because we wanted to stay over Christmas just relaxing having cook being able to cook a proper christmas dinner and then yeah. we stayed three weeks it was about three weeks about it was pretty weeks. quiet in the Eden. over christmas so we actually spent christmas with a family then as well that christmas reached day. out through youtube which also made our yeah. special experience even more special we weren't left by ourselves then on christmas day so, yeah. that was so nice. just the start of summer really we arrived in the south island and then at the beginning of january i believe 
we made our way down to the Catlins, all the way to Invercargill. Invercargill, good old Invercargill. Stayed there for quite some time. We went probably there back for a few the days. The cloudiest probably yeah. city in New Zealand. And then we had our big day coming in January. We had a Kepler track booked mid of January. Great walk. And then a few days before they announced big rain. And we oh, were afraid that, that we scary. couldn't do it. But in the end, everything worked out and we had the best time ever walking. One of the great walks, amazing. So we made our way over to the Fjordlands and then, yeah, we had another thing organized toward the actual woofing page. We had woofing on a lavender farm in Queenstown. So Just right outside. after the Kevlar track, we went to Queenstown for the first time. That was end of January, beginning of February. Yeah. Where we stayed there for a week. It's actually only about five days, madam. Only five days. Yeah. And because we loved the Great Walk so much, I booked us the road burn. So we went back to the, to the, the root, green, burn. root burn and we walked the root burn and then we went back to Greenstown. So yep. we did kind of a lot of back and forward. So if you're staying there for a while, you know, if you, you miss some organize. places, if you miss some places and you like yeah. the place, you know, you you wanna you wanna go back to yeah. the place. And then end of February, my friend came almost over for two weeks and we did the entire west coast so we drove all the way up from queenstown to nelson on the west coast and all the way back because she only stayed there for two weeks so we kind of did a run through the west coast we traveled with her yeah, yeah yeah stayed in airbnbs though yeah. and rented a car and so completely our... different travel experience yeah. So we left our car parked up yeah. in the Lavender Farm and then we came back. Then we continued traveling in our Toyota Wish. Yep. Went to Wanaka, Cromwell, what else did uh, we do? St. Batins. Oh um, yeah, we did St. Batins with the lovely Nick and Rachel. That was amazing. YouTubers, if you don't know who they are, put a link below. Then it was March. I think we, we went to Greymouth to do your travel license, Glenn. Yeah, so I did my driving <laughs> test mouth. in New Zealand because it was a lot easier to get my driving license than it is in Ireland. So I'm still on my, I'm still on the waiting list in Ireland after Insane. one year, so yeah. And he passed, he's now officially- uh, Full driving license he's a, now. He's a Kiwi driver. <laughs> I have a Kiwi license. And then we it's went, pretty funny. It went in March to Christchurch back to see the lovely family we stayed. To YouTube. To YouTube. And then also we celebrated with all our friends we met in New Zealand. They all came and we celebrated all together. Clint's 2D's birthday, which was Don't very Don't forget special. about the Doubtful Sounds, the overnight cruise, which was a couple of days before that. Oh and my then God. we celebrated in Christchurch. It was, oh my God, how could I forget this? This was a whole week of celebrations only for Clint's 2D's birthday. It's a big day though. And it's then a big birthday. also we spent time in Gore. How could I forget that? Gore as well to, with a family um, through YouTube. So that all happened in February and March. Peter point, and Jenna. Oh, and then Amazing at some people. point we went back in March, April to make our way all the way back to the North Island. We did a few stops in North Island. Visit our friends in Palmerston North. Then we did the Tonga River crossing. We went to the Hobbiton because I absolutely wanted to see the Hobbiton when they were fully built out the interior of yeah, the Hobbit home. inside the house. We missed the Coromandel. We also visited a friend in Toranga. We missed the Coromandel, so we did the Coromandel, the Northland, Raglan, all the spots we missed. So yeah. we did that in April, just before we left. And then we spent some more time in Auckland, the end of April, just before we left the country. And it was amazing because we didn't have too much time and the first experience in Auckland wasn't the best. It was so. winter, it was dark, it was dull. We just just wanted to get out of the city but give, we came back give it a second we did have a good time i have to say it was very second special chance? yeah we gave it a second chance just to quickly summarize this was our 10 months all the that was a lot of summarizing but all yeah. the main stops we went to in the 10 months yeah a lot of stops a lot of stops you literally need to see in every corner yeah of the country. but we save you know when you have a car or a van you save a lot of money on accommodation it's a big and expense rent so of course if you buy a car at the start of your trip and then you sell it for a bit more or the same price it's a win-win because you literally just got a free year uh, rent yeah. so it, that was really beneficial for our side because that's exactly what we did we bought the car and then we sold the car for a bit more or the same price yeah. so it was a win-win if you're wondering how did we have a shower and all we had a gym membership because also glenn is going to the gym three times snap a fitness, week so it's like a snap fitness all around the country so it's ideal to get a gym membership when you're traveling the country, especially if you like exercising, it's a win-win. So you can use the shower facilities every evening, have a shower and then 
park, go, go somewhere and then yeah. stay overnight. So And I also kind of planned our route kind of around Where the to gyms Snap were, yes. Yeah, they're all yeah. over the country, so. Even in the South Island there is quite in a lot. In the lodge. major towns and cities. I think the only place where there's no Snap Fitness was the West Coast. There's nothing there anyway. There was nothing. It's quite isolated, there's barely any people. But except that, it was always really handy to have like a shower. It felt really like luxury, it felt really it's nice. It's pretty good. The showers and at the beaches as well sometimes. And and there's always public toilet, so there was no issue never finding a toilet really. Toilets are everywhere. So That's the good thing about New Zealand. They have clean toilet. toilets everywhere you go. And water was not an issue. We got it in a gym or anywhere we went. Yeah, there's always a lot of water filling stations as yeah. well. Yeah. Win -win. And I also wanted to talk, did some part-time work, some so, small jobs, odd jobs as you call it. I'm going to give you an insight in that. So for every city or town we, we went to, for example, we did some house sitting in Dunedin, that's an example. And then we would go on to the Dunedin Facebook community pages. So every town or city has a community page in New Zealand. So this is the best approach to find work. Go on to them community pages, advertise that you're available for work and what type of duties you would like to do. And you will get a lot of people reaching out. For example, in Dunedin, we had about 50 requests from people looking for us to work. So it was overwhelming, but we had a lot of work available. You put how much you want to charge, like $30 an hour for some gardening, some painting. And that's also how we made some pocket money on the side. Like two days work, for example, for us, two full days would last quite a while mm. because we only have to pay for food, food and, fuel. and fuel. So yeah, that would last yeah. a while, which was a win-win so, for us. And because of that, we decided, okay, we don't want to stuck in one place. And also because we realized there's so much beauty in New Zealand, we want to see it all. So we don't want to stay in one place for too long because there's so much to see. Just pick up like all chops on the sides and just go to the next place. And do the same thing. Yeah, and do the same thing. So my, our, what we did was like, we did one day avocado picking yeah. and then a lot of painting painting fences you guys in New Zealand love to paint fences and then we did a lot of gardening because nobody wants to do weeding and, yeah, and literally nobody likes weeding <laughs> and, and everybody, everybody has weeds a the garden yeah so that's the main job There's so much today. potential there right obviously weeding isn't pleasant but there is a lot of work in that area if you want to earn some money yeah so and it's a pretty easy gig you don't need much experience to the weeds so yeah. But it is some part-time jobs. People do seasonal work when it comes to fruit picking. There is a lot of fruit yeah. picking jobs. But we actually never really no. signed up for any of them type awesome. of jobs because of the income from YouTube. Hello guys, I just wanted to intrude this video in relation to an itinerary we created while traveling around New Zealand over the 10 months. So we have all the places marked, our favorite cafes, soy scene, Maddo's favorite dessert places, all the special places we discovered while exploring the country. Put a lot of work into this, well actually Maddo did. We'd greatly appreciate it if you check out the guide, the link is below and yeah that would really support our travels so now i want to ask you what are your favorite memories and highlights of the 10 months in new zealand so they kind of vary a bit don't they i actually had to write them down of course you want to know you can't you can't expect to come up with everything in we don't, on the spot we didn't want to forget anything some of my highlights is going through this cave Cave stream, stream scenic reserve in Arthur's Pass. It's like this nearly one kilometer cave, very dark, there's water coming through it. I just found that was quite an extreme adventure for I, me. I, I find, like caves. I find it so funny that you mentioned this. <laughs> Why? It's, I like it's it. so clear. If you it was know pretty clan. intense because you're like, was... are, we, are we gonna reach the other side? It took at I least more than one hour. Because that can be dangerous if it starts raining in the so cave. So, this is like if you around Castle Hill on yeah, the Artist way Pass. to Artis Pass. Yeah. Oh my god, Artis Pass. Amazing. Amazing place. It's Amazing like Christchurch. Amazing place. It's like it was an adventure, it was it had it all. But you have to make sure you check the weather forecast to be yeah, able to go head, through the cave. Lamps and you're gonna get water, it's gonna go up to your, that up to your was, chest. That was amazing. And the second Arthur's Pass. Arthur's Pass is also beautiful. The overall pass itself is magical yeah. to drive through because there's so much stops you can stop at so many beautiful places, like places like Castle Hill. Mm. My second one is probably the overnight crews of Delphos Sounds, magical rites in the heart of the fjords. You're by yourself, immersed in mother nature. You have nobody else around you except you. So you're just enjoying the beauty that surrounds you. It's different to Milford because Milford, there's a lot of lot going on, planes, 
a lot of different boats, but doubtful sounds. It feels so like only two boats going. Feels like there. you're just there by yourself. And yeah. that's what made it so much special. And the food was probably my favorite <laughs> of dishes I've ever had uh, in New Zealand yes. was on that boat. The food was out of this world. And I think we probably wouldn't have done it because it was quite expensive. Expensive. Even yeah. though we had a discount. I mean, it's a good price for what you get in the end, but we wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for Glenn's birthday. I was looking for special experiences for his 2D's birthday. Yeah, something special and this was definitely special and I highly recommend it if you could do just one thing, something really unique, yeah, to the Dart for Sun overnight cruise. I'll put the, the price below anyway. Yeah. We did get a 30% discount at the time, but yeah. um, we don't know what the situation is now. Right, and then the third one was the Root Burn Trek. I found it was a really extreme trek and it was just out of this world. We got good weather the and also most, in the morning. The most beautiful day ever. I just found it was very magical in the morning when we were driving there. It was all the, the sheep on the street, blocking the road, oh, yeah. the shepherds trying to guide the hundreds or thousands of sheep along the road just before the, the track. This up, was like fairly early, this was before sunrise. We got up so early and then we had, an, uh, had to wait an hour for the sheep moving. Because <laughs> it was a big bridge, so um, all the sheep were going across the bridge and there was no way to, to cross because the sheep were blocking the road. That was fun, it that was, was nice. Good. Good thing to experience in the countryside of New Zealand. But then the fort was probably St. Batten's Central Otago. Very underrated place. So uh, Central Otago, felt like a desert driving through the roads there, nobody around. So I felt very <laughs> isolated, which you want to feel when you're traveling around New Zealand. But what made it so special? So we met this lady called Alana. She was touched the hearts very much over buying eggs on the side of the street because yeah. I like to buy a lot of eggs. I'm always looking for my protein fix. Eggs are always my go-to anywhere I go. But we had some nice deep conversations with, with Alana and yeah. And then from there we went to St. Batten's. We also met some amazing people that live in the town of St. Batten's, which was ran probably by 2,000 Irish people yeah. back in the old days. There was even an old Irish cottage there, <laughs> which I was blown away by. I couldn't get over that because that's exactly what the cottages looked like back in Ireland. So yeah, we spent time with Nick and Rachel. So yeah, in St. Nice Batten's. Yeah, them. so we stayed there in the campsite, the Freedom Camping location, yeah. just yes. outside St. Batten's. Well done, Glenn. Nice highlights. It's pretty cool, yeah. 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 Do you want to hear my highlights? What's your highlights? Okay, I think my first highlight, I think the Kepler trick, it was this. Extreme. Extreme first time ever walking 60 kilometers or four days biggest hike I've ever done. And I you felt too. like, yeah, for you too. And I felt like we trained kind of, we did beforehand quite a lot of hikes and I had it always in the back of my mind and then it exceeded my expectations because even though the weather was so extreme, maybe because it was so extreme, we had rain, we had wind, we had everything. And it felt like this crazy adventure and uh, afterwards this big achievement. And it was just amazing, amazing. And I can only highly recommend you do a great walk. But it does book out. So they, book. they book out really fast. You have to make sure you book them as soon as they open up. A one year or six months in advance. As soon as they, as soon as they open, we booked it six months in advance. And I'm so glad we did because it was one of my favorite highlights. And then you mentioned also the doubtful sound. That was amazing. I'm not so going nice. too much into this because you already talked about it. Um, yeah, probably also Hobbiton. That was one of the recent, recent videos we did and I felt like a kid on Christmas. I don't know why, because I'm not the biggest Hobbit Lord of the Rings fan, but I just felt like this is such a magical place and everything was just so it's cool. very different. So different, never yeah. experienced anything like this before. Um, it was good. Even I the feeds at the end was good. Oh my god, I have so many highlights. I wrote also down St. Bettens, I wrote down the Royce Peak Sunrise Hike. That is magical. The hike itself. Monica. The hike itself is not the best in my opinion, but the views for sunrise is incredible. I've never seen anything like this before. But they would expect a lot of people yeah. doing that hike. I also wrote down lupins. I don't know why. <laughs> lupins. The lupin flower. <laughs> I love the lupin. They were flower. beautiful though, yeah. Especially in Arthur's Palace. Yeah, um, but these ones are my main highlights. Definitely Kepler Trek. They do stand out the most from the crowd, mm -hmm. but yeah. Their experiences 
Okay. I also like the the Glenbrook high tea. I love high tea. And steam train. The steam train. That's all highlights in the North Island. I'm just realizing Tonga Viro crossing was amazing. I love the Artist Pass. Artist Pass is amazing. So North Island does have uh, a beauty. Yeah, so a lot of people talk about the South Island, but definitely North Island, you have your beauty too. So, so don't miss out on the North Island yeah. if you're traveling around New Zealand. Yeah, I think there's more highlights or positives. Yeah, so let's talk about more positives, like in general, not, not in terms of locations and places, but in terms of what overall we liked about New Zealand and why we would recommend anyone going to New Zealand. Glenn, do you want to start? What is your... Or oh, what do you think are the most positive things about New Zealand? The people always make it a bit more special while traveling New Zealand. It's the hospitality, how people kind of just want to talk to you always and get to know you, ask why, questions. Why do you think it's so special though? It's also because I find New Zealand is just isolated away from the world and there's not many people because there is, a, there is five times more sheep than people, like people always say. But I feel like people have more time for you and they want to listen to your story. They look after you fairly well. We've experienced so many occasions. I think we've we stayed with so many locals. We have to, we mentioned this so many times in the video, but I can only repeat it so many more times because people, you guys, they look are after amazing. Us fairly well. And we met so many lovely people through YouTube. So many people reached out and invited us to their homes, to their private homes, and we were guests. And incredible. It's insane how people think in New Zealand. Like incredible. everybody you trusts you with their oh. with their house and they will let you stay in the house without even meeting the people most of the time it's it's mad but that's just the reality and that's the way the world should be and it's it makes the country very special what else do you think is positive about people don't take life so serious and i like that yeah. attitude you're gonna live a happier fulfilled life with that type of mentality <laughs> it's just yeah it's just so far away i think you kind of if you're not reading the news you can really yeah. live in your own world i think that what makes um it's so special you're away from all the trouble yeah. in the world yeah it's, it's like its own place away from everything which it yeah. which is the case because it's the furthest you can travel from mm. europe and it's like its own bubble own special bubble yeah. which i like so yeah if you want a good peaceful life and in that bubble, what I find always so fascinating that you have everything in New Zealand. You can go to the beach, you can ski, you can go hiking, you can so surf. I don't know, I'm just talking about sports, but there is so much possibility and opportunities within New Zealand, North and South, Isle, South Island that you don't even have to travel anywhere like else country. because it looks, it looks, you know, so tropical, then it looks like it kind of desert, oh, sand dunes. Desert, the dunes, and you, you have so many variety of landscape and possibilities. It changes so much, that even you, in the winter. Yeah, you don't even have to go anywhere to experience all the beauty. So you should be very grateful for where you live because it's an absolutely beautiful country. Yeah, I highly recommend, you know, going to New Zealand because there is so much beauty, so many amazing things to see and explore. You're and have a good time something you can't even compare you could probably compare the fjords to norway or the catlins to ireland you know but like you know you have everything in new zealand in one place that makes it so every special. area reminds you of some different location around the world which so. i think is one of the really positive things yeah. the, the cool things yeah, everything about. on your doorstep yep. okay go for it the food you <laughs> i food. love food and the quality in new zealand the food you get is Off incredible standard. yeah We've no? been, oh, it's very good quality, like compared to a lot of places we've traveled around the world, New Zealand has very high quality goods and food, yeah. which is magical. Fresh produce, fresh eggs, every day. Yeah. So another thing is, is the safety. And you can buy amazing quality of eggs on the side of the street. I got very good bread, which is important to me. And we had like some German. really good quality some, food. We did, yeah. We're always satisfied. We're oh. always very healthy, so. It was good. And another positive thing, if you first time traveling to New Zealand and you're worried, you don't know, is it safe, is it not, even traveling, solo traveling as a woman, I Fine. highly recommend doing it if you're still thinking about it. Don't worry, just go to New Zealand on your own. It will work it's out. absolutely fine. We've met so many young. I'm, solo. I, I, I don't know how they do it, but like they were 19 from Germany, from everywhere, and they were traveling on their own, which was amazing. And they said it's so safe. They don't really feel, maybe there is a few spots in the North Island where they didn't feel so safe. 
I yeah, think yeah. kind of the Northland, Nord or Nordland. around Auckland, where some people didn't feel too safe. But honestly, it's safe everywhere. We never had any issues. We left sometimes our valuables in the car when we went to pack and save. So never felt that, or oh, maybe someone could break in. It does happen sometimes. Yeah, it well, does that can happen. happen anywhere so not world. to exclude, but that can happen even in New Zealand. But like in general, I they're did... probably the that's probably the most minor criminal activities that happens. Yeah. People breaking into yeah, your cars, yeah. that's really all. Like, if you compare it to the rest of the world, that's right, that's nothing, which is good. Even so. at night, like, that's was, fine, yeah. We sl we stayed in so many places, yeah, and slept in our car. And I think, I no issue, killed. you'd be fine, yeah. Was I worried at some point? No, you were only worried about the, the possums. Oh my god, yeah, I was more scared about the possums at night and people breaking in. <laughs> the possum was making noise outside, so she was like terrified that it was going to come in and eat her while she was sleeping. It, I don't know, which maybe. is not possible. How was I supposed to open the door? Baby, a possum so smart. Oh, come on, like, Jesus. I was like scared that they did it crawl into the car. You can sleep the whole night because of the possum. Making I noise outside. I, that was probably my worst night ever. We woke up for sunrise, we did them on Sunday. Uh, the Edoras. Edoras. That was that beautiful. That was beautiful, but I had a worse night's sleep because I was afraid of opossums. Okay, let's not get into this too much because it, it's kind of ridiculous. It is pretty funny though. So we're just going to talk about Madeline's favorite foods or desserts because <laughs> that's a big highlight for her in New Zealand. So. Yeah, so don't be worried. Wherever you are from in the world, if you travel to New Zealand, you're gonna taste delicious food and also delicious fruits and desserts and everything. I was in food heaven and I felt, I felt amazing. It's so um, diversified. I can't get over how many different choices of everything there is. Like yeah. there's multiple cucumbers, multiple kiwis, multiple we, tomatoes. We've seen fruits we've never seen in our it's lives It's so exotic. Before. There was always something new to try and... Over 10 months, like we're always discovering yeah, new fruits always, and vegetables. Yeah. And one of the biggest thing I discovered, so a backstory, growing up I never liked green kiwi fruits. It was just something, it's too sour, it just, just not doesn't feel right. Coming to New Zealand, I discovered yellow kiwi fruit, right. red kiwi fruits. Yeah. This is amazing, uh, just amazing. And I was, and we left and I thought, I actually bought the last few days more red kiwi fruits because I like them so much and I kind of said my goodbyes to the kiwi fruits. Coming to Germany, I found something in the stores and it really made my day. I don't know, I've never seen it before. They must have been just introduced. Golden. The golden kiwi fruits. And of course I bought them and I'm gonna eat them now because I want to. And yeah, that, that, makes me, that made me Travel really that happy. Far, like, it's Honestly, insane. Uh, they were really expensive. But it wasn't really a thing back a year or two ago. I think it's starting no. to get implemented now into Europe. The That's a thing in New Zealand. You guys export all your good stuff. All the forest quality goods, oh, unfortunately. You export all your amazing things to other countries. Because of that, things are actually cheaper from New Zealand mm. in different countries. And they're more expensive in the country. Mm. Which is a bit of a... They were on sale. Yeah. I bought them for 44... 44 cent? 44 cent. In Euro? I think it needs a few more days, but I'm gonna eat it now. I don't know. The skin is the best. How eat it with skin? That's Only you fiber. eat it with the That's skin. That's lots of fiber. You haven't tried it. I had one before. Let's do this together. Okay. Let's make it happen. Scoop it out. One, two, Enjoy three. Mmm, 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 mmm. Oh yeah. Delicious, delicious. Oh. New mm. Zealand always mm. seems to impress us. No matter what. I can't believe. Even, even in Europe. <laughs> I can't believe I'm eating a gold kiwi fruit. It's insane if you think you travel around the world. You travel on the other side of the world. And now I'm eating a sun gold kiwi fruit from New Zealand. I wonder where it came from. In Sesbury. New Zealand. Yeah, I wonder where it comes, where it comes from. Kiwi land somewhere. Kiwi is where? Oh yeah, Gisborne. Gisborne. So while I'm eating this, I want to talk to you about what do you want to talk foods. About? Oh yeah, tell me all about it. The highlights. My highlights. The ones that stand out the most. It's always dessert anyway. Let's, let's talk about a dessert. Let's talk about ice cream first because I got this type of ice cream probably six or seven times. Patagonia ice cream in Queenstown and they have a few different locations. Three, you only have four different stores. Four different locations. 
in Arrow Cromwell, Town, Queenstown. Arrow Town, Queenstown, and then the Queenstown Airport. Airport. So if you're around that area, make sure you go and check out a Patagonia ice cream. I know the queue sometimes is long, but it's well but worth it. Is it is probably the best ice cream uh, in New Zealand. You like the one in Wellington, but nah. <sighs> Um, no, it's the Dog Island, but I have to say, top favorite ice cream in all New Zealand, normal ice cream. We're not talking about the amazing real fruit ice cream you have in New Zealand. My top real fruit ice cream was from Blenheim. Yep. There was a strawberry Native real fruit ice cream fresh. with fresh strawberries in Blenheim. Because that's a strawberry farm there. That place where I got it in Blenheim, in case you're wondering, is Hedge. Hedge grows. Gros, Hydro. Ponic strawberry. That's that's what it's called. Absolutely delicious. So that's the strawberry. Uh, then another a coffee shop. We've been to every time. Oh yeah, that's definitely the best, ice, uh, the best. The coffee best shop, coffee in New Zealand. The best coffee. The best matcha. matcha the best everything. The best atmosphere. In yeah. our opinion, is Poor and Twist. We've been there so many times. You're the winner. Amazing place. It's just such a cool place. Good and vibe. Good vibes. Nice and people. It's so unique. I do think there's other amazing coffee shop in Wellington. But it's just they make it very different to the rest of the coffee yeah. shops around yeah. the country. Yeah. They, they make it's like a drip coffee. Yeah. And um, it's they, no other places in New Zealand. Kind of does that. I actually don't. I don't don't, haven't seen, seen anywhere it. else. Wellington. They have a lot of good coffee shops. Coffee but capital this of is, the country. In my opinion, the coffee. Covered. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Then the food on the Darfur Sound uh, overnight cruise and the Hobbiton was outstanding. I don't know how they do it. I don't so know. many people. I don't know. That was just amazing. I do not think Hobbiton is overrated. I think it is what it is. It's worth the money. And if you go to Hobbiton, definitely go for the food. And embrace it. Book in advance and book. You have to the book food. months in advance, unfortunately. So you have the dinner, the, the yeah. lunch, and then the breakfast option. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. You got yeah, the lunch yeah. option. Definitely out of this world when yeah. it came to quality of food. They do an amazing job at that. Yeah, I had a few, then a few bakeries I really liked. I liked the bread from the Ferg Baker. So it's a pretty good bakery, the Ferg Baker. Queenstown. In Queenstown, they had lovely bread. And they open all the time. They open all the time. They go, go, go all day. Yeah. Like, they close very late, don't they? Yeah. 10 o'clock or so. I love the meat bakery. Was it Need Bakery? Palmerston North. They had lovely pastries. Palmerston, Palmerston, sorry. Yeah, then also, I actually didn't write this down, but I just remember the baker, it's called Featherston. Oh, the Featherston Bakery. Featherston yeah. Baker, the book, the book capital of New Zealand. They have really good pastries in my opinion. And bread. The, the Danish, they were really good. So yeah, so they have, they have the most bookstores in the country, in Featherston. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you pass through that town, you have to drive through. So it's a nice yeah. little sweet town. I had so many nice pasties. The bakeries are amazing, but just to mention these ones. Oh, and something completely different was the white stone cheese in Omaru. Oh, that was beautiful. There was that a really was nice good. cheese bird. Probably tell us different, but we had a nice cheese experience there. We had a really nice cheese experience there. Was cheese to cheese lover, but. For me, it's as important, but still, it was it was very nice. Then amazing fish and chips. We Where had, was the best fish and chips? We didn't have too much fish and chips, but we had a lovely fish and chips in Greymouth. But also a local yeah. fish was made by Claire in Toranga. Homemade chips. The farm we stayed on. Yeah. Best fish I've ever had in my life. But I yeah. found the one in um, also in Kaikora. Kaikora they and have a nice fish and chips shop. That was delicious too. Yeah. Mm, mm, and mm. New Greymount. New yeah. Greymount, Greymount and yeah. Kaikora. Kaikora. Were probably the two highlights for fish and yeah, chips. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. honestly, I was in food heaven in New Zealand and I had one of the best foods ever. So you if you're from New Zealand, you're very lucky. And if you're traveling to New Zealand, you're gonna You're gonna be it. in your elements, honestly. <laughs> if you're foodie, you're gonna love it. For sure. So before we answer your questions we received a lot of them that we want to go into this but we want to first talk about the not so great experience we had the negatives you know everywhere is going to have its ups and downs and we had a few of them experiences on a few occasions yeah. in new zealand it is what it is it obviously is we is. don't showcast it so we, much we, to you guys but yeah we don't really talk about it too much we kind of we're usually very honest but we don't obviously talk too much about it in the videos but these videos are here to talk fully honest give our transparent opinion real experience and our yeah honest 
we always try to be very honest and authentic. I mean, it's in my nature. I can't be. Anything. Game and honesty. <laughs> Game and honesty, yeah. I'm not really fake or can't play a, a role or anything. You just have so, to tell her, tell her how it is. Uh, it is what it is. Yeah, so we had a few so so experiences. You can go into depth with that. So you had your. You got a disease. So you got infected with ORF, which is a sh disease you can get um, on farms from sheep yeah. or goats which are not vaccinated yet. So usually it's not really a problem, but if you're going on a farm, just make sure you can ask are they vaccinated if you're dealing with lambs or just wear gloves. I think having gloves. plastic gloves is the easiest, but honestly not everybody gets it. It's really uncommon and unlikely to get Orf and I had really just bad luck. Say as she had the worst of the worst. And I had the worst of the worst. God. And I went to three doctors, and none of them knew what I'm having. It's not common. Yeah, it's, it's the, not as common as you think. Sheep farmers yeah. kind of only know about this. And it usually goes away by itself, but because I went to a doctor and they cut it open, I was afraid it wasn't. It got infected, yeah. so it went to a stage where I got an underlying kind of rush on my entire body all my arms all my legs so i had swollen. this insane rush and then it got just worse and worse and i had these swollen hands it was Big just blue ones. Insane the worst looking. thing i ever experienced we can show you a picture if you don't like to see anything ugly and anything disease ish I'm you know we show it you can skip it but we're gonna show it in three two one so let's so, not go into too much depth because no. we already did in our previous video. Yeah, if you're interested in that, just go back and watch the Shocking Tooth video we did. But that was one of the worst experiences I had. You were so sick, yeah. But did we have any other sickness? I don't think we were No, sick. we were good, we were good. We felt otherwise really great. It was just really, really bad luck. And I had to recover for two months and it was just way It's a long bad. process. It's inconvenient, of course. But so, yeah. so you got through it. That's all I that matters. Juice. You're immune now, Maro. Am I immune? Yes, you are. You won't see anything anymore. I think just a bit sensitive, but other than that, <laughs> everything is fine now. <laughs> the big thing that comes up is woofing. We talked about it in so many occasions because it's quite a popular thing. You go and you trade your time for work and accommodation, yeah. which can be really rewarding. It's a it could be nice. It's a hit and miss. It is know, a hit and miss. You can get good, with okay, and then bad experiences. You, well, you can get everything in life, right? We hear a lot of horror stories when it came when it came to Wilfen. So at the start, it went from the best experiences to the worst in, from our experience. Um, so we all we, we got the the top, the best experience on the top, and then mm. it just went downhill from there. It's pretty funny, but that's that's how it worked that's out. That's reality. I think we had such an incredible experience staying three months on this farm. That um, yeah, we just had we a high, a high was, standard. This then. was normal, and I think we shouldn't have done our last woofing experience with it in Christchurch because it was just we felt I don't yeah. know it was like passive aggressive like it's like I felt like we she was doing us a favor even though that wasn't the, the case we were doing her a favor family we're talking about we were only there for five days like but she wanted us to work every day for that four hours a day it was a lot of hours if it's only five days so there wasn't really an agreement I think this is a problem in New Zealand you, you need to make a contract perfect. Make a contract, just clarify how many hours, what is included. Never go by just saying you're, this is the contract, this is this agreement. And maybe also have a phone call with the people, just get, get a their feeling, vibe, their, their energy. Feeling. So there's a lot of people we met, they had good experience, but also not so great experience. So it's not just our experience. So yeah. it is, we talk with a lot of people and it's kind of common. And there's this website we talked earlier, website like Woofing and you can check the profile and reviews, but we found that there's only good reviews. You know, there's only good reviews and we went to a place in Christchurch with a lot of good reviews it and was it was one of the horrendous. worst weeks in our lives. It was dreadful. <laughs> we just wanted it to be over. And but you, like, like, I always find Glenn is the nicest and most easygoing and most positive person in the world. It's just the energy. And even you were like, oh my God, oh my God. It's passive aggressive. Like she would say things not directly yeah. to us, but to like her kid or her partner. Who? And, like, two year old kid how is this even two year old kid yeah yeah it wasn't nice like well, even the last two days she didn't even feed us food and yeah that wasn't agreement we did our time because we 
said we were taking a day off, but yeah. we did our hours. For example, we worked eight hours one day, yeah. and then we would expect to get the next day off, which then we, she was surprised when we said this, like where we did eight hours in one day, yeah. so we did double the time, and then you would expect the next day off, which she expected us to work even obviously, more the next day. I was like, what? Obviously, it's a fall from, from both sides. I mean, not yeah, we communication, but yeah, communication. We should have asked, we should have, you know, I'm not blaming anyone, but it's a communication issue and have a contract. And I remember that I felt like so heartbroken. I was like crying. You're crying. I don't after. even know if you have this footage. We do, yeah. We did record some footage how we felt, just like in case we make one of these videos. We usually never make a video straight after because we feel there's so much emotion sometimes after a bad experience that you say maybe things you don't really mean and after a while it's not really that bad. We just left the premises. Bit a bit disappointed in the experience. I'm just like a bit heartbroken as well, but kind of felt like we got taken advantage of, but we didn't get fed the way we agreed. And yeah, you know, we sometimes we had to actually make our own food with our own food. I'm glad I'm gone now and I don't have to deal with that stress anymore on the street. So yeah, we just wanted to get away and then we decided from that day. She's really trying to take advantage of us, like that's what yeah. I felt. But um, she was going on like weird, you know, she's doing us a yeah. favor, but that's kind of how that's that can happen with Wilfen in New Zealand. And I've heard that many times. It's like, are they doing a favor for you? Yeah. Yeah, so. Even though you do weeding or just, you know, you want to experience, you know, woofing the whole concept of it is also the new skills in the game. You want to gain new skills, you, experiences. You, you bring in your skills and you learn maybe something and they, it's be mutual benefit. That's yeah. what it should be. And it could be such a nice experience. And don't get taken special. advantage of. Make sure yeah. you do a reasonable amount of hours. I, would, I, I wouldn't do any more than 20 hours a week. Yeah, so we honestly. recommend if you're looking into woofing, it can be a cool thing if you do 20 hours a week, yeah. probably four days, uh, four hours a day, and then you get some But that should be off. for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know? That's, yeah. That's a lot of hours lunch. if you think of minimum wage standards actually sounds like that's it's a lot of money and it's still a good deal for the, the person you're working for so and then we decided okay this is it with woofing and yeah we just left it at that we, we gave up yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of left a bad taste in our mouth so we didn't really need to do it so much but we wanted to get ex good experience sometimes you, you do encounter yeah some not so great experience so what's uh, what's the third one um on this point not so great experiences i think we should talk about uh, the reality uh, the reality of also being a youtubers because sometimes i feel people think we have the best life ever and we had a great time meeting so many nice people honestly through youtube through this community the reality of also being a youtuber we love documenting our journeys but some of the negatives is being sued that doesn't apply to the normal average tourist traveler but yeah one of our personal bad experience was being sued in New Zealand yeah, we didn't think I never that would happen. I was never sued in my life so no I never sued in our lives and fortunately being sued nothing happened no the because end, there was so no uh, there was no contract so they couldn't do anything yeah so just to have the backstory we stayed with the family they reached out to us to youtube yes. and we stayed with them did some house sitting for their pets while they were in vacation so we stayed with them for quite some weeks and we were we were discussing the ground rules and we we like we never show any personal or private no, information no. that's kind of common sense to us and they said yeah just don't show our kind mess. Of mess i was like okay i mean this I won't is show mess, you then. know this is our side of the story because we filmed a um, video in their living room like this one here yeah. in my parents house you seen the background it was a shocking truth video and they weren't happy with no. showing the background of so the they house. went to court and they obviously put a complaint in and i didn't i wasn't aware of this so i just got an email yeah. and uh, i was like i got sued by these people due to disclosing yeah. personal information I was and like, they were reaching out to us to delete the entire video which but I put a lot of work into. We put a lot of work into and we also know our YouTube rules and we know the rules of making videos on private privacy regulations. It's a bit of YouTube. a hit and miss topic. So we deleted some content that might have been sensitive just to go a step towards the direction so that we find kind of a common agreement 
but then afterwards they weren't still happy that we have the video still uploaded even though there were no private information anymore seen so they went to court we got an email we didn't even know they um sued us ended up being then it was forfeit yeah. the court case because they had no contract, so yeah, there was couldn't no, do anything. There was no contract. It was like one to one. There was nothing. That's really. why you should write contracts sometimes. That's why you should write contracts. <laughs> Another reason. But yeah, there was an emotional few weeks for me because I ended up writing very hard emails back and forward of deleting content. Yeah. What should be deleted? You really start crying and breaking down. I had it a was... few mental breakdowns. There was really a big deal that just made life so much harder it was just behind the scenes you know it was, it was very upset. behind the scenes that was the time at your birthday really yeah. like are you okay no we're bad people why are we bad people because we're doing everything wrong apparently one thing after another i just feel like i want to go home like have enough honestly like what things happen that people accused us of like things we didn't even do or like that we break people's trust and yeah i know and uh, sad, our culture is so similar or close to New Zealand culture and you still feel like so far away It's definitely not the same, I don't know. It was my mistake of assuming that our cultures are very similar but apparently they're not They're very different, yeah And uh, apparently communication is a, big is, a, issue. is a big issue because I'm super honest and I say what I think and it's my mistake to expect that from other people when they clearly don't say what they think so. Or they say something and then don't actually mean it. Yeah, makes me really sad right now. Really sad and heartbroken. So let's focus on the future and let's move on. Let's do this, Madeline. Yeah. Why are you always so positive? Because you either cry or you laugh, Madeline. That's why you have. A, that's why I have a clan in my life. Yeah. You know, that's like things we never really talk about. It's not important for the videos, but now we want to talk about it. That not everything you see sometimes is the reality. And we had a few rough weeks going back and forth with these emails, even though we had the loveliest time at their home. That was amazing. Their animals, their pets were adorable. Even when they came back from vacation, we stayed with them for another one or two weeks. A week or so, we, two weeks, yeah. We did, um, we took care and brought their children to their classes in town, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, babysitted them basically. So we had a lovely time, and then it ended kind of really horrible. Yeah, that we kind of ended, it ended the whole relationship and stopped any type of contact. So that was really rough. It's just a lack of communication on both sides. I just hope they can live now in peace with the decisions that have been made. We made our peace, but that was definitely not a nice no. experience. Ups and downs, all part so of life. That's kind of going on behind the scene, but I think these things were the biggest things the worst experience for us and yeah. it's obviously just our experiences that's not, not nothing any tourist would experience but there might be any difference we never had any bad weather or any cancellations or any except anything. the ferry except the ferry down to the south island it got cancelled oh, for three days okay that's not a big deal yeah that's not a big deal because we found another person to youtube that let us stay with them for three stay. days so it ended up turned out being a great experience in the end but nothing else i would say was so horrible that yeah there's nothing else in no. new zealand no. everything was great and in the end i was like literally crying leaving this country because having the best time ever even though there were some downs let's get into the juicy questions of you guys we received a few questions and we made up questions that were often asked for example what's our favorite pies yeah yeah that's very important <laughs> too uh, new zealanders yeah super important but that let's... question so our first question is what city would we live in or what's our favorite city, Glenn? We always say Christchurch. I'm not sure why, but of course, a lot of nice modern infrastructure, a lot of history. We do always say Christchurch, don't we? Yeah, it's a yeah. nice, I think it's spread out. It's not, it doesn't feel too busy either. Too crowded. Yeah, yeah. it's just a nice vibe there, yeah. I find. Yeah, honestly. I, th I think that's the city we would choose if we were going to move there. It's hard to kind of explain yeah. why, but I just felt like we were at think, home in, in Christchurch. Yeah. I think also because it's in the South Island, we we are very nature people. I think that kind of resonates to us. And you can go from Christchurch to so many places. So many beautiful places. Yeah. yeah. And it's a big, bigger city. It's, it's not also a village. Fact. 
And Queenstown is nice, but it, it gives me too many touristy vibes. And, and it's, it's small and compact. Yeah, it's, it's too expensive. I know it's beautiful, but if you wanted yeah. to choose around the area, it would be Wanaka, the yeah. mini version of Wanaka Queenstown. Nice. Less touristic, but still very beautiful. Is it also our favorite city? I have to no, say. No, it's like a town, madam. No, I mean, is Crescent also our favorite city? I also like Wellington a lot. I love Wellington. Obviously, busier, yeah. more busier. Busier. The rent will be more expensive. Wellington is beautiful. It is. It is a nice place though. What else? There is some really cool cities around New Zealand, but yeah, these ones are my favorites. It's hard to pinpoint. It's the perfect yeah. spot, isn't it? I think those are my favorites. Christchurch, yeah. Wellington, yeah. So, and the next question is kind of not really, is the South or North Island better? I mean... It depends on your experience. Oh, it depends really depends. Your insight. So What's you, your favorite, Madam? That's hard. Maybe, maybe a small bit more the South Island, but only because we love hiking. I, I got into hiking and it's amazing. And the hikes we did in the South Island, the South Island was amazing. And it's just this nature. And I don't know. But it's North Island has its beauty. There's so many cool things. You know, when we were in Wellington and went to the Castle Point, man, this is Castle Point Lighthouse, beautiful. The location, yeah. The location, that was and the Tongariro crossing, and there's so many amazing places in the North Island, so. Every place has is good, so. So the next question is the most important question. To all the Kiwis. What's our favorite pie? So we came to New Zealand. We didn't even know that pies are a thing because this is not a thing in Europe. No, so it took a few weeks, a few months to adapt, and then we finally realized how nice and delicious pies are. So we came down there we to fell a in love with pies. We did, yeah, it was it was nice. But then we came down to a conclusion, chose our three mm -hmm. favorite pies, and we have to be honest. To yours or mine? I'm we gonna have choose mine. Ones. I'm gonna choose mine, but I find the pies are much better on the South Island compared to the North. I have to say, they're much, I think this is more tastier. Yeah. It's hard to explain, but you understand what I mean. And if you're going to New Zealand as a tourist, please don't miss out on a famous pie. They, they are amazing, authentic. amazing lunch snack. And just for in between, it's just amazing pies are, pies are life. You always see the workers picking them up on at lunchtime. Yeah. It's so funny. What's your tooth? What's in my third favorite pie? The third one. Yeah, so we. <laughs> oh, there we go. We burly pies, Blenheim. We got a cheese and mince. I think. You got it. Cheese and mince, a typical pie. That was delicious. That's my third favorite pie. Burly pie. Burly Blenheim. pies, Blenheim. And then my second. This was actually a super big surprise because I got no recommendations for this place. We just discovered this by surprise. The Cromwell Holy Smoke Mince from San, San, Sangus Pies. Yeah. That was unreal, delicious. I don't know how we discovered that. That was I, so random. I think we, we, we just were, searched pies that day. I think day. we were hungry and then I searched on Google Maps and it had a really good rating, I think yeah. 4.8 or so. And I thought, Glenn, I think we have to check out his pie shop. And they were all sold out, so we had to wait for yeah, a while for, for the, the new batch more stock to yeah. come in, but right? They were, they were good. Amazing. The number one pie in New Zealand We've been there twice. We did, it was that good. The Sh Sheffield's pie, Sheffield just pie. outside Christchurch. Yeah. And we, we got the whiskey and venison pie. That yeah. was my favorite. And you know the Pie funny, in New Zealand. The funny thing is, because it was, we drove back from Kramas, the artist pass to uh, to Christchurch on Glenn's birthday. And I you gave it, birthday. He, you know, I put in a candle and it was like celebrating My your birthday, birthday. With a pie and a candle. Very Kiwi style. Happy birthday yeah. with some pies. Yeah. So my favorites. Tell me all about it. Let's go. Favorite pies in New Zealand. I actually, yeah, I think, know. I think number three is also Cromwell. They were quite juicy, but I forgot which one I had. I usually take chicken because I like chicken more. And then my second honorable mention is the Fat Bastard Pie in Vacagel. We yeah. had it so many times because we spent so much time in Vacagel. Most southern <laughs> town in New Zealand. So yeah, that was amazing. And I had the chicken and cranberry pie. I loved it. I, it, I just felt it was very juicy and creamy. And you got and it many times. Yeah, I got it many times. I don't know. You couldn't have enough of it. I really like the 
the creamy. The creamy texture? Yeah. The pastry. Maybe the pastry was better in other pie shops, but like... The creamy. It's just, yeah, it was very really good. The mixed ingredients. And then the first one, the first one when I had the venison, and whiskey and venison pie in Sheffield. Wow, that just hit me. That's two of our favorite pies there was, in New Zealand. Yeah. And we've tried a lot. We did try a lot in, in we did Auckland. Tried, we tried so many famous pies also the fairly pie in the south island and the north island even the recommendation went in auckland i don't know we have we have a video yeah. so uh, of the four the kind of highlights in auckland yeah. which we we tried a few of the pies up there as well so if you haven't watched the pie video go back and watch it yeah it's really good uh, it was a good day yeah we just yeah we are in love with pies but these ones are favorite but I think also another, let's call it honorable mention, we had a nice one. Well, Fairly Bakehouse is nice. Um, the Neat Bakery, actually, in Palmerston North had a nice that one. That was good, that was good. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I personally find Jimmy's pie a bit overrated. It is, it's the cheaper yeah. pie though, that's why. And I also find the Wakefield in Nelson a That was bit a bit overrated. overrated. We were, I didn't actually like we that. We were really, really like excited, but I didn't. We got some recommendations yeah. for there. Yeah. So that was kind of That's the conclusion our of our pies. Very important yeah, for you guys. Very so important. I'm glad we got that off our chest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're glad we talked about the most important topic of the day. So, <laughs> cost of living compared in other countries, did you feel safe in New Zealand? We said that we feel safe, yeah. Of course yeah. you feel safe. Yeah. It's, it's a really safe country. Cost of living? Cost of living, yeah. So groceries are definitely expensive in New Zealand because you are isolated away from the world. So you don't have access to exports as much as we do in Europe so food is mm. super cheap here in Germany especially mm -hmm. but the quality you get good quality yeah. though but you, you get quality so it's worth it mm. but rent is cheaper rent is cheaper in New Zealand compared to like Ireland for example so it does balance out in that way but how is it purchasing a house the prices for buying a house houses are actually expensive in New yeah, Zealand houses, houses are more yeah, expensive in New Zealand too they're expensive right wow well it depends where you want to live if you want to live in the middle mm. of nowhere in the South Island you're going to pick up a pretty good yeah. price of course well, but if you want to live near a major city the cities are always expensive yeah so it is I was, just, I was just blown away by the prices yeah. of houses like but it's yeah, expensive everywhere. I would but. say it is still a good life in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, just get a tiny house, live in the middle of nowhere, yeah. live off the land. I love the tiny house movement in New Zealand. We've seen so many. We actually also went to um, exhibitions. Yeah, check them all. Uh, we went to the most amazing exhibition in, in Gore. What was it? The. It's a one, once a year big huge farmers. What is it called? It's like a field day. Field days in Gore, which Once was a year. For, I, 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 and they have everything you can think of there. <laughs> everything you can think of. For the farmers. Uh, we've seen a few tiny houses and they're incredible. But this gives us a good impression of you know how, yeah. how life is in a tiny house. So, yeah. yeah. Incredible. So, yeah. Another one was what, what the, country do you think Kiwis would enjoy visiting based on your take on us? So, obviously. You have to say Ireland because oh, yeah. it's kind of the same vibe. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. A yeah. Bit, Irish people are really nice people. Uh, it's hard to say that as an Irish person, but no, you, I can you, you say think that's true. I can say it in all, in all the Kiwis. Every time we said I'm from Germany, I uh, claim from Ireland, they were all like all over him. Oh, where are you from? And my family and yeah. So I think you all like Ireland. You would like Ireland, or maybe UK also. No, not as much as Ireland. Not as much maybe, no. but yeah, would love are Ireland. People are. The nicest, I can say people in Ireland are the... Nicest in Europe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Okay, okay. Oh, that's a big statement. Where what? where would you think would be an ideal place for a Kiwi? If No, if they can travel anywhere. They all go to Australia, but if, yeah, a lot somewhere of else to maybe. Australia. They all love the Gold Coast. Kiwis would like Italy or Spain, the food's good. Yeah, feels out of this. Oh, place. maybe Canary Islands, because they're volcanoes too. That's a volcanic island. Yeah, it's similar. It depends what you want. If you're looking for similar kind of, Switzerland has some incredible mountains. Landscapes, landscape. very similar to New Zealand. I would say it, it depends what you want. If you're looking for similar places, 
don't know. Or some different, like Spain. It's hard to give you the answer for that it's one. It's a hot place. Switzerland, Norway, Spain. But in general, like any to any tourist that comes to Spain or Switzerland has a good, uh, or Italy has a good time. So I always recommend. I love France. I think France is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I love the culture. Someone asked what we did with our car and what's our next adventure. So what we did with so our car. Basically, we sold the car mm. for slightly more what we paid. I mean, we put a lot of maintenance into it, so we still... It's basically even out, So We broke even, so it was great. Yeah. Great porches. We sold the car on Facebook Marketplace in Auckland. In Auckland. So it worked sold, out very well we with Toyman because we sold it like two days before we left the country. And we sold it to a nice German girl yeah. that is traveling now somewhere. Solo. In, somewhere solo traveling with our little Toyota Wish. We We're miss, miss it you, a lot. Toyota. We're gonna miss you, Mr. Uh, Wish. We honestly, like it became our home. So it sounds really crazy that you get so attached to an item, but for us it was our home and it was the best purchase ever. I was afraid it was too small of a car, but I highly recommend getting a small car. You can get anywhere with this car and it's big enough. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Get around. That I love perfect. it. Perfect, ideal. I love it. Small and sweet. They yeah. said. And our next, what was the next adventure? So we went to Fiji, went to Vanuatu, and then we went to Australia for a week, followed by the Philippines for two weeks, and then two weeks in Japan. And now we are in Germany. Yeah. Clan is heading soon to Ireland and we're trying to also make some content here yeah. because we heard you guys are interested in German and Irish content. And it's very different to yeah. New Zealand. So, so uh, we hope you're excited for all the video that we already filmed and we hope you stay tuned for our next adventures. And yeah, we have a big announcement. What are we going to do in September? In two months? We're going to go to Sydney, Australia. Woohoo! We're yeah, gonna yeah. move to Australia again. Do it again. We gotta go all the way back to the other side of the world because we loved it so much. And we spent another 10 months probably mainly in Sydney and we yeah. already purchased a new baby. Oh, we have a new car. Bought a car already. We already bought a new Toyota. And it's sitting there waiting for us when we get waiting back. Waiting for us. And we're so excited to go back and make some more content around Sydney and we want to take day trips or weekend trips and maybe do some more exploration if you have more time around Should Australia. That was a recap of the year. Oh my god. We got was... everything off our chest. Yeah. And just to Very summarize, I, w I do want to mention for the people, we haven't talked about it for the people that are watching we met so many nice people from youtube and they're probably watching it's ken's family mike's family peter and shannon chucky and brent and claire's family and all the other people that are watching we love you guys and we love our community you've been amazing we you were are. welcomed with open arms good as goals oh we were welcomed with open arms in new zealand you guys are good as goals <laughs> seriously Sweet ass. Sweet ass. Sweet ass. Sweet it was ass. New Zealand sweet ass to summarize this. It was just amazing. This is a wrap and we had the best time. I can't. I'm getting emotional now. I know. It's all kind of coming back now. It's coming back. Like all this. We're, uh, talking about we're talking about this. So we uh, haven't really had time to think about it so no. much because we were just traveling go so go much. go and traveling and I am um, New Zealand is in my heart. All you guys are in my heart and the so adventure nice. is over. And that's that's everything in New Zealand. Yeah. You, if you're still thinking about it, I hope we convince you to go to New Zealand. And for all the lovely people that are watching our adventures, we hope you subscribe to our channel and gonna watch our new adventures. Hope you stay loyal and you stay tuned for everything that's coming. Your loyalty means the world to us. So. It does mean. Helps the world so to us much. and helps. it helps us out and yeah we, we honestly we're just making this for you guys because we love traveling and we just want to showcase the true authentic culture of every country to you guys for everyone that's sitting at home can't travel won't travel yeah we yeah. try to do a bit differently compared to yeah. most youtubers so, so yeah, yeah that's that's the idea well, here we are. So thanks so much for everything. Yeah, we thanks wish so you much. all the best. Thanks so much for all the, to all the Kiwis to welcome us with open arms and, and your beautiful hospitality. Yeah. You looked after us very well. We had the best time ever and it's gonna stay in our hearts for the rest of our lives, seriously. So catch you in the next episodes. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe and comment down below. And it would be in the world to us if we catch you in our next adventures. Bye.